Exceptions in Java are basically the same idea as we saw in JavaScript. Properly speaking, the term exception refers to an object which contains information about something that has gone wrong. And when a line of code goes wrong at runtime, we say that it throws an exception. What happens then is that the exception propagates up the chain of calls that got us to that point. When an exception is thrown in a method, if that exception is not handled in that method, it's going to propagate out of the method. That is, it's going to back out of the call to that method to the point where that method was called. And then the exception must be caught and handled in that method call, or else it will back out of that call in turn. And this process will happen all the way back up the call stack until we get to the first method invoked in our program. And if the exception is not caught and handled there, it will propagate out, causing the whole program to abort. If you didn't follow all that, I suggest you go back and review our discussion of exceptions in JavaScript. Recall that in JavaScript, the exception object, the object which actually conveys the information about what's gone wrong, that object can be any kind of object in JavaScript. It can, for example, simply just be a string. In contrast, Java is a bit more heavy-handed and formal. In Java, an exception object must be an instance of throwable or any descendant class thereof. The throwable class itself is a child of object, and as you might expect, it's in the package java.lang. Also in java.lang, throwable has two children, one called error and one very confusingly called exception. The distinction Java makes with these two classes is that error and its children are for any exceptions which you are really not meant to recover from. This generally includes things that might go wrong in the Java virtual machine itself. For instance, it's always possible, if generally unlikely, that the JVM is going to run out of memory. The JVM is really just one process run by your operating system, and if for whatever reason the operating system refuses to give the JVM more memory when it requests it, well, there's really nothing that the JVM or your Java code can do about it. So in such events, the JVM will throw an exception which is of type error or some descendant class thereof. In contrast, exceptions of type exception or of some subclass thereof, these types of exceptions are thrown when it is plausible that you might catch the exception and do something appropriate to cope with the situation. The classic example of such a scenario is when we deal with files. Whenever dealing with files, it's always possible that something might go wrong. For instance, say you are writing to a file that's on a USB thumb drive, but the user pulls out the thumb drive as it's being written to. Well, if that causes an exception to be thrown, then in our code we can catch the exception and then do something appropriate to cope with the situation, like maybe alerting the user and telling them, hey stupid, plug that thing back in. Now, very confusingly, the exception class has a child called runtime exception. And like with exceptions thrown of type error, exceptions thrown of type runtime exception aren't really meant to be handled. The difference is that error exceptions represent things which are outside of your control. They aren't really the fault of your code. There's something averse going on in the whole system or something averse going on in the JVM. Runtime exceptions, in contrast, are generally things that you've done wrong. They're basically bugs in your code. So for example, let's say we create a reference, and then at some point we assign an object to it, and later then invoke a method via that reference. If at runtime, when execution reaches this method call, if the reference doesn't hold an object, if it holds just null, this is an exception. It's a runtime exception. So if we wanted to intervene in this potential situation, we can catch the exception. And we do so by putting this method call in a try block with a corresponding catch, which catches exceptions of type null pointer exception. Null pointer exception is a child of runtime exception, and it's the kind of exception that Java throws in this case. So in the parentheses of the catch, we declare a null pointer exception variable. We can call it anything. Here we've just called it e. And this is the variable in the catch block, which is going to hold the exception object. So when c.meow is invoked, but c is null, a null pointer exception is thrown. It's done inside a try block, so control jumps to the catch block, which corresponds to it. And in that block, the exception object is assigned to the local variable e. The trouble with this kind of exception is that it can occur basically anywhere. 
we have method invocations all throughout our code. And so the question is, are we going to surround each and every one in its own try-catch? That would be absurd. Besides, when we do catch these exceptions, there isn't really a sensible thing to do in response. So the truth is, a runtime exception like this represents really just a bug. And the fix for these bugs is to change our code so they stop happening in the first place. The fact that the Java runtime detects these errors and throws exceptions that abort our programs is actually a good thing. For instance, invoking a method with no object is not something we intended to do. So from that point on, it's clear the program won't continue to behave correctly, so it shouldn't continue. So the point is that although Java allows us to catch these runtime exceptions, we just generally shouldn't. Just like generally, we don't attempt to catch and handle errors either. Java acknowledges this distinction between exceptions you basically should never catch and those you usually should. Any exception which is of type error or runtime exception or some subclass thereof, those are called unchecked exceptions. All other exceptions are checked exceptions and they are treated differently by the compiler. Say we have this method bar where we are potentially throwing an exception of type Leo and that Leo is a checked exception type. But well, because this method bar potentially throws a checked exception, the Java compiler requires us to acknowledge that. So we must add a throws clause to this method to acknowledge that it potentially throws this checked exception type Leo. Otherwise, the compiler is unhappy. The consequence of this throws clause is that in any method where we invoke bar, we either must put the call to bar in a try catch so that we can catch the Leo exceptions, or we have to in turn acknowledge that that method will potentially throw a Leo object. Again, the throws clause is used to declare that a method might have such checked exception type propagate out of itself. So when we catch and handle checked exception in a method, we don't need the throws clause because it's not possible that it's going to continue to propagate out of that method. So here now, when we catch and handle the Leo exception, bar no longer needs a throws clause. Because a single method might throw more than one type of checked exception, a throws clause can list multiple exception types separated by commas. While you have to cover all the exception types that might be thrown, you don't necessarily have to list each one. You can instead list an ancestor of that type instead of the specific type itself. So in fact, because all checked exceptions are ultimately going to inherit from exception, we can just write throws exception and that will cover everything. So anytime you need a throws clause, you could always just write throws exception, but the trouble then, as far as the compiler believes, that method is going to throw exception, not more specific types. So when you invoke that method, the compiler is going to require you to either catch and handle type exception, or in turn give that invoking method its own throws clause that lists exception. This basically would make a mockery of the whole idea of checked exceptions. You'd end up with all of your methods declared with a throws exception clause. The whole point of checked exceptions is that when a programmer invokes a method, they should be encouraged by the compiler to consider handling that exception rather than just blindly ignoring it. And so the compiler nags us and requires us to at least acknowledge that there's a potential exception that we're not catching here. That's the idea behind checked exceptions, and it's actually one of the more controversial ideas in Java. A lot of people consider it just a mistake. They think all exceptions should be unchecked. In fact, Java is the only language with checked exceptions. No other language forces programmers to acknowledge where certain exceptions might occur.